Good evening. Welcome to Good Friday service. A couple of things for you this evening. Uh, we will not pass the offering plate. Uh, I believe tonight is about focusing on the greatest thing that's ever been given to us, the greatest offering, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. There will be a plate on the way out. If you do bring an offering, you can drop it off there. And the second thing is, last night, we'll leave worship tonight in silence. I won't be greeting people. And I would just ask you to carry that silence through, maybe to your car, maybe on the drive home. It's just be quiet and think about the events of today. Because without today, Easter is not possible. So let's begin with our first hymn. invite you to stand as you're able. We begin our worship this Good Friday in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us ever walk with Jesus to see the depths of His love, to behold the gift of His forgiveness, to gaze upon the heights of His grace, to marvel at the magnitude of His mercy. We walk with Jesus to Golgotha. That's Aramaic for the place of the skull. That's where Jesus gave us his all. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Dear Jesus, our Savior and Lord, lead us to behold the agony of your rejection, the pain of your condemnation, and the horror of your crucifixion. Empower us to walk where you walked and to the people you encountered on that Friday so long ago. Stay with us, Lord as we witness your suffering and listen to your last words of love. As we approach Calvary, let us become mindful of our sins and of our willful rebellion against our holy commandments. Eternal God, we confess that we have turned away from you in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have lived for ourselves and have refused to bear the burdens of others. We have passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. O oh God, we have tried to hide from you and from one another. We confess our fatal attractions that enslave us and the failed relationships that haunt us. We cannot plead the strength of our temptations or the frailty of our nature 
or place the blame on other people. We can only say, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Hear the good news this Good Friday. Jesus walked to places of rejection, suffering, torment, and death for you. Jesus was determined to go to Gethsemane, to Gavatha and Golgotha for you. That's why Jesus forgives you completely and loves you eternally. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority alone, I therefore forgive all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this Good Friday comes from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out my, the beard. I hid my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been discouraged. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will, con who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our epistle reading comes from Galatians chapter 3. For all who rely on works of the law under, are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeem us from the curse of the law by, re by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. I invite you to please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma, sapanani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling to Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened. The many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this is the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. 
among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Lord, I ask that you speak through me this evening. Lord, may the words that come from my mouth give honor to you and your holy word. Let your words speak to us this Good Friday as we visit the places of the passion of our Savior. I ask all of us in the name of our crucified Savior who died and will rise again in three days for our sins. Amen. Good evening, friends. How many people have seen this movie, The Passion of the Christ? How many people have seen it? Passion of the Christ is a movie, it seems like I just saw it yesterday, from 2004. It's about the events of Good Friday. How many people knew that this movie was rated R? Did anybody know that? Rated R means restricted. It means under 17 requires accompanying parent or adult guardian. It also means it contains adult material. Parents are urged to learn more about the film before taking their young children with them. Tonight we're going to talk about the events of Good Friday. The events that the world tells us are R-rated. Based on the world's standards, what you're about to hear would be considered an R-rated sermon. R-rated means bloodshed. It means violence. It means nudity. We will see in this message that R-rated will refer to more. So much more. Because tonight, we're not limited to the world standards as Christians. We begin with bloodshed and violence and nudity. During this Lent season, we've taken this journey, the places of the passion of our Lord. Tonight, we walk to Golgotha. That's Aramaic for the place of the skull. Golgotha was a place where Roman soldiers systematically maimed and mauled people. And then they threw them away. Golgotha was not only a public place of execution, Golgotha was also Jerusalem's city dump. Christ's crucifixion at Golgotha was an act of utter brutality. Rome was famous for it. In Latin, they call it morus turpissima crucis. The utterly vile death of the cross is what they called it. Violence and bloodshed are at maximum levels. They scourge Jesus. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And finally, they take out a hammer and three nails, driving them through his hands and his feet. All rated in R-rated images. Add another R-rated image, nudity. We forget that one, don't we? Jesus is stripped before King Herod. He's stripped again when Pilate commands it at Gabbatha. And he's stripped naked once more at the cross when the soldiers divide his garments by casting lots. When Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke says that he sweat blood. The medical condition is called hematohydrosis. Hematohydrosis happens when people have psychological stress that is off the charts. Hematohydrosis makes skin extremely sensitive to the touch. After experiencing hematohydrosis, Christ's skin was extremely fragile and sensitive. So when the Romans flogged him the next day, the pain had to be unbearable. The lacerations tore into his skeletal muscles and produced quivering ribbons of bleeding flesh. Roman soldiers would braid together a whip of braided leather and they had these thongs on them with wooden spikes that were woven into them. They called it a flagrum. A flagrum would strike the flesh and the spikes would cause deep bruises and then they would rip and cause lacerations as they pulled them off. The whipping would have gone from the top of his shoulders all the way down his back, through his buttocks and down the back of his legs. The Romans were good at it. They had crucifixion down to a science. 
Historians tell us in the span of 140 years, from 69 B.C. when they defeated Pompeii, to the destruction of the Second Temple, Rome crucified 350,000 Jews in 140 years. It's 2,500 crucifixions a year. Or just about seven per day. Historians also tell us that most crucifixion victims lasted 72 hours on the cross. Christ lasted six. They almost killed Him when they whipped Him and scourged Him. At Golgotha, the Romans threw Jesus on the wood. Then drove the spikes through His wrist and His feet. All the while mocking Him and spitting on Him. You see, if the nails had been driven through His palms, the weight would have caused His skin to tear and Christ would have fallen off the cross. So the nails went through His wrists, which meant they went through His median nerve. The largest nerve that is going out of the hand. And it was crushed by the pounding nail. When Christ's feet were nailed, those nerves were also crushed. And then our Savior's arms, they were outstretched six inches upwards, intentionally dislocating His, soldier, his shoulders. The stress on His diaphragm forced His chest into an inhaling position. In order to exhale, he had to push up on his feet to relieve the pressure on his diaphragm to temporarily exhale. When he was doing that, the nail tore through his feet, eventually locking up against his tarsal bones. For six hours, this breathing continued. Christ scraping his shredded back against the coarse wood until he became completely exhausted. Unable to push up and breathe. As Jesus slowed down his breathing, he went into respiratory acidosis, leading to an irregular heartbeat. In fact, with his heart beating erratically, Jesus knew that death was near. This is why he said, Lord, into your hands, I commit my spirit. All that stress caused Jesus to die of a cardiac arrest. His heart couldn't take anymore. R-rated images, to be sure. Bloodshed, violence, nudity. But these R-rated images of Good Friday lead to gifts for each of us. Gifts that you cannot come close to rating. The first unratable gift that we receive on Good Friday, we are redeemed. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama, samatani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew is using the Roman measurement of time. The Roman trial with Pontius Pilate began at 6 a.m. It took the Romans three hours to prepare Jesus's, Jesus for crucifixion, so he was nailed to the cross at 9 a.m., or about the third hour of the day. So from the sixth hour, it's noon, until the ninth hour at 3 o'clock, it's dark. Completely dark. Three hours of darkness, and it wasn't a solar eclipse. That darkness indicated the Father's judgment against Jesus. Because the Savior was carrying the sin of the entire world on Him. Christ hung in the darkness. We get to walk in the light. Christ was cursed. We are blessed. Christ was forsaken. We will never be. Christ died we live. Christ was bound, we are free. There's a word for all of this. Redeemed. The second gift, the second unratable gift that we receive on Good Friday is we are reconciled. 
And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. Josephus, a first century Jewish historian, tells us that the curtain in the temple was 55 cubits high. Or that's about 80 feet. The tearing of the curtain from the top to the bottom indicates that only God could do that. God no longer needs the temple and its sacrifices. It means that we are reconciled with the Father and we didn't achieve this gift. We get to receive it. It is Christ's Gospel gift to us. We are completely reconciled and at peace with our Heavenly Father. God has opened the door to eternal forgiveness. The third unrateable gift we receive on Good Friday, we are renewed. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and saw what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Do you want to be renewed? Come alive? Live again? Then right now, stand at the foot of the cross and confess with the centurion and those with him. Truly, this was the Son of God. Trusting Jesus, loving Jesus, captivated, beholden, and enamored with Jesus. The word for that is renewed. The fourth unrateable gift we receive on Good Friday is we are resurrected. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after His resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Imagine that. Christ, power over death, couldn't even wait till Easter. Already on Good Friday, there's a resurrection. The death of Jesus is the death of death. The day is coming when the Savior will return. And we too, we will be resurrected. On that day we will stand before the throne, washed white in the blood of the Lamb. All of our shame and guilt covered in His love. The word for that is resurrected. The events of Good Friday, the bloodshed, the violence, and the nudity. It was all for you. It was all for you. And I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are all redeemed. We are all reconciled. We are all renewed. And our resurrection it's coming. What kind of love is this? Love that we have such a hard time understanding, don't we? This love is radical, isn't it? It's love that we don't see this side of eternity. Radical comes from the Latin word radix, which means root, the core, the center. The Good Friday giver, God, and the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, is radical. They are the root. They are the core of our salvation. It's the center of our hope and eternal life. There will never be anything more important. Jesus Christ and what He did on Good Friday is part of the best thing that's ever happened to you. On this Good Friday, these events of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, events that are so hard for us to watch and understand, are also our gifts. Gifts from our God's loving heart. Amen? I ask you to please rise. As Christians, we confess what we believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. I ask you, Christian, what do you believe? 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, whom for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and is sent into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, whom with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Onward in Christ's footsteps treading, pilgrims here our home above, full of faith and hope and love, let us do the Father's bidding. And so we pray, dear Lord Jesus, that there had to be a day when You, the eternal Son of God, would be made sin for us is not good. But at the same time that You freely and gladly gave Yourself for us on the cross is ultimate goodness. Lord, in Your mercy, Dear Lord Jesus, from the cross You uttered two impassioned cries, Father, forgive them, and my God, my God, why have You forsaken me? The first, our forgiveness, required the second, Your God-forsakenness. Together, these cries humble our hearts and ignite our faith. Lord, in Your mercy. Lord, dear Lord Jesus, when You cried, it is finished. You left nothing undone. We are redeemed, reconciled, renewed, and resurrection is most certainly coming. You become, you became the just for the unjust, the beautiful one for the broken ones, the way for the lost ones, the Savior for the sinners, the Lamb of God for the rebels from God. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord Jesus, thousands of years into our life, in the new heaven and the new earth, we will still be stunned with awe, worship, and gratitude for the greatness of Your sacrifice and Your love for us. Jesus, You exhausted God's judgment against our numberless sins. Jesus, let me faithful be. Life eternal grant to me. Amen. You may be seated. When Jesus had spoken these words, He went out with His disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which He and His, disi which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who had betrayed Him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with His disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to Him, came forward and said to them, whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me?
So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl, who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But, what if, I, but if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. For this, this was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did, an, did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? 
Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. And Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Pavement in Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified.
So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the Skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It reads, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic and Latin and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But his tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to seem whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate for their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another Scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as was the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there.
of Danny! Mashlam. Lord, remember us in Your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.